when Speed was released in 1994, an action star was born. Since then, Keanu Reeves has appeared in a number of action movies that have put his abilities to good use. Some of them are stone-cold classics, while others aren't. Here's every one of Reeves' action movies ranked from worst to best. Based on the William Gibson cyberpunk novel of the same name, 1995's Johnny Mnemonic follows the story of a man with a cybernetic brain implant that helps him store information. As is the standard for Gibson novels, humanity's reliance on technology and the dystopian corporate environment of this future keep people in a kind of endless servitude. Reeve stars in the title role, with supporting performances from Dolph Lundgren and Ice-T. Sadly, Johnny Mnemonic's premise just isn't exciting to watch, despite the action being pretty heavy. As Johnny tries to recover his own childhood memories that have been replaced by years of data smuggling, the main conflict loses tangibility, and no amount of action is enough to make us care about his plight. Johnny Mnemonic is basically a guy running around a sci-fi future trying to remember something he forgot, which doesn't exactly make for a great cinematic experience. 47 Ronin was one of the biggest box office bombs of 2013. The overly ambitious project reportedly fell victim to a constantly shifting focus in production and a lack of experience on the part of first-time director Carl Rynch. There was also a debate around the project about the balance between Eastern themes and a perceived need for more Western touches. One of those Western touches was the addition of Reeves to a mostly Japanese cast of the film, which retells an old legend about 47 rogue samurai avenging the death of their master. What really brought 47 Ronin down was that, despite its well-choreographed fight scenes and slick use of 3D and CGI special effects, the movie was surprisingly dull, with little to no development of Reeves or any of the other one-dimensional characters. But don't worry, Reeves did go on to make another martial arts movie in 2013 that turned out much, much better than 47 Ronin. We'll get there. 1996's Chain Reaction, starring Keanu Reeves and Morgan Freeman, suffers simply from being confusing. Reeves stars as a machinist who discovers some new convoluted thing about hydrogen energy. Before his lab explodes and he and his colleague are framed for the bombing, Freeman plays the wealthy doctor funding their project to whom they turn for help, though of course he turns out, perhaps inevitably, to be the bad guy. But much like Johnny Mnemonic, Chain Reaction has no tether for the audience to grasp onto for stabilization. Reeves' character is framed for something that isn't clear, while Freeman's character is after something that never really becomes clear either. It's a mess of a movie whose only saving graces are a few good action sequences. There were a lot of these formulaic action movies in the 90s, ones that all had something to do with science or government or spies. Unfortunately, Chain Reaction wasn't one of the good ones. The final film in the Wachowskis' Matrix trilogy has the benefit of bringing the epic story to a close, granting it the opportunity to provide a rousing climax and closure to its philosophical journey. Sadly, that didn't save it from receiving the worst reviews of the series, largely because it sucks pretty much all the fun out of the entire franchise. Not only does Revolutions end on a downer of a conclusion, with Trinity killed in action and Neo sacrificing himself for peace between the humans and the machines, but the final showdown turned out pretty underwhelming in itself. The program known as Agent Smith, played brilliantly by Hugo Weaving, wants to destroy the Matrix, the machine world, and the human world, for reasons that never really become totally clear, other than that he's a broken outcast and wants revenge. A rogue virus, Agent Smith was apparently supposed to be deactivated, but has instead decided to make it his goal to kill literally everybody. It was your life that taught me the purpose of all life. Of life is to end. In amongst all this, the characters we know and care about get lost in a jumble of side characters, overwhelming robot battle sequences and convoluted plot lines. The Matrix movies can always be proud of their seriously cool action scenes and intriguing ideas, but this one was a bit of a bummer. Oh, no, no. No, it's not fair. Constantine is one of those movies that should have been really cool but just didn't live up to its potential. Based on DC Comics' Hellblazer books, Constantine tells the story of a mortal human who can see the celestial angels and demons who infiltrate and manipulate humanity. Rachel Weisz co-stars as a police detective whose sister's death reveals a plot that upsets the balance between the living and the dead. The movie's got a great cast, including an androgynous Gabriel played by Tilda Swinton, and some of the fight scenes are really fun too. But ultimately, the plot isn't one that translates particularly well onto the screen. As a result, the movie is simultaneously convoluted and predictable. Roger Ebert gave the film one and a half stars, while his TV co-host Richard Roper wrote, "...it's just so awful that the crew must have been snickering."
While 1999's The Matrix was hailed as an exciting new entry into the sci-fi genre with groundbreaking filmmaking techniques, its two sequels weren't nearly as well received as that first hit. The two Matrix sequels weren't great mainly because, much like too many other films these days, they felt like they should have been a single movie. But the plot had expanded and bloated to the point where the powers that be decided two would be more exciting for audiences. The second movie in the trilogy, 2003's The Matrix Reloaded, was praised for its action and style but panned for its portrayal of the humans who live in Zion, humanity's haven outside of The Matrix. One infamous scene in particular has been subject to some pretty intense mockery since the movie's release. Between that and Reloaded's over-reliance on philosophical conversations at the expense of the action, it simply ends up failing to live up to the first Matrix movie, despite Reeves' excellent fighting skills. Many actors end up dipping their toes into the world of directing, but not all of them are any good at it. Thankfully, Reeves' first directorial outing was actually pretty decent. Man of Tai Chi, a Chinese-American martial arts film, is a love letter to the film star and Reeves' stuntman friend, Tiger Chen, and is inspired by his life and experiences. Man of Tai Chi came out the same year as 47 Ronin, but managed to avoid the same mistakes that brought that movie down. For one thing, the movie actually embraced its Chinese roots, caste, and environment rather than shoehorning a white Western viewpoint into an ancient story. The critical consensus was that Man of Tai Chi didn't do anything groundbreaking per se, but that the story harkened back to a style of martial arts movie that hadn't been seen in quite some time, which Reeves lovingly embraced and paid tribute to in his directorial debut. The New York Times wrote, The movie finds a Janice-like Mr. Reeves looking in two directions at once, toward the old-school kung fu movies of Once Upon a Matinee Time and the modern China emblemized by the high-rises that slice through the smog swath Beijing. Reeves' respect for China and the style of filmmaking that served as a personal tribute to his friend is on very clear display here. If ever there was a spiritual successor to Ted Logan of Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, it's surfer FBI agent Johnny Utah of Point Break. The film, directed by future Oscar winner Catherine Bigelow, tells the story of a gang of crooks known as the ex-presidents because they wear rubber masks of Nixon, Reagan, Johnson, and Carter while they rob banks. They also happen to be expert surfers, so rookie undercover agent Utah infiltrates their ranks, eventually embracing his destiny as a wave rider. In addition to having some thrilling action and killer surfing scenes, Point Break is also a lovely reminder of the acting talent of Patrick Swayze, who passed away in 2009 from pancreatic cancer. He was a beautiful person, an artist, Patrick. He just wanted to experience life. He lived life to the fullest. Granted, both John Wick movies are great, and it's pretty hard to rank one above the other. John Wick Chapter 2 comes in just behind the first here because the first acted so well as a kind of surprise comeback film for Reeves. John Wick Chapter 2 begins just a few days after the events of John Wick and finds the former assassin continuing his rampage of revenge, only this time with a new dog. The film features just as much sleek, well-directed violence as the first film, but John Wick Chapter 2 also takes a trip over to Rome for some international espionage among the ancient ruins of the Eternal City, proving that Wick is truly a worldly international assassin. Whoever comes, whoever it is, I'll kill them. I'll kill them all. Despite having starred in numerous action movies, John Wick might be Keanu Reeves' grand opus of a role. This 2014 neo-noir action film tells the story of a former assassin drawn back into a life of killing after car thieves kill his puppy, who was a memento left behind by his late wife. This role is absolutely perfect for Reeves, whose sleek looks, naturally stoic nature, and incredible action skills are all put to great use in the movie. Everyone was kind of surprised by how good John Wick was and how perfect Reeves was for the part. It was labeled as a career comeback for Reeves, whose star had kind of dwindled. In 2017, Birth Movies Death wrote, It wasn't too long ago that critics were bemoaning the presumed end of Reeves' career as a leading man. But the John Wick franchise has helped bring Reeves back into the spotlight, and now he's calling the shots. You, uh, working again? No, I'm just sorting some stuff out. Never before and never since has a city bus had such a grand movie moment. Speed is the film that put Reeves on the action radar and is still a great watch 25 years later. Reeves stars as Los Angeles SWAT officer Jack who boards an LA bus that's rigged with a bomb that will explode if the vehicle's speed drops below 50 miles per hour. Sandra Bullock co-stars as a passenger named Annie who takes over driving duties while Jack tries to defuse the bomb and save the other passengers. 
Speed's premise is a tad ridiculous and there are plenty of seriously unbelievable moments throughout the movie, but its absurdity is overshadowed by the fact that it's just so darn fun. Reeves and Bullock have great chemistry and his action prowess here is accompanied by a real sense of charm and acting charisma. This is the movie for which Reeves will be remembered for the rest of his life and beyond. It's also the franchise that puts sci-fi masters the Wachowski sisters on the movie map by utilizing new filmmaking technology and tapping into the exploding internet zeitgeist, The Matrix was able to become an action movie for the budding new millennium. Reeves stars as Thomas Anderson, a computer programmer who lives a double life online as the hacker Neo. As he's contacted by Morpheus and Trinity, he finally learns the truth about the world. Artificial intelligence has taken over the planet, and robot overlords use humans for their bioenergy, keeping them in a catatonic state while their minds believe they are living in the regular world. This false consciousness is called The Matrix, and Neo joins the quest to free humanity from its grasp. The movie used innovative camera techniques to amp up the many awesome fight scenes, including 360-degree camera movement and extreme slow motion to make even more of a mind-bender out of an already interesting premise. By utilizing Reeves' natural stoic nature and his sleek movements, The Matrix became his best-ever action movie. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!